This is chapter two, academic reading and learning. So within this chapter, there's gonna be some tips that discuss what you should do when you're reading academic texts. Some of the things that you should focus on, some of the things that might help as far as tips to better read your academic assignments, such as your textbooks and also taking hey. notes. So the quote for this chapter is, to read without reflecting is like eating without digesting by Edmund Burke. So how is this quote related to the introductory paragraphs of this chapter? But before you can even answer that, the first question is, what does this quote mean to you? So take some time to think about this and decide what this quote means to you, and then answer how it relates to the introductory paragraphs. The learning outcome within this chapter, there are six of them. The first one is reading to learn. The second one is understanding the reading process. What are the four steps of the reading process? Take note of this. The third learning outcome is using basic reading strategies. The fourth one is reading critically. What does cr reading critically mean? What two elements are present in reading critically? Um, the fifth one is improving vocabulary. Sixth is reading graphics. And the seventh is a review. So learning outcome one, reading to learn. Effective academic reading this entails dividing your assignments into doable parts. Try to read for 15 to 30 minutes at a time. Why is it essential to divide your reading up into parts, 15 to 30 minutes at a time, as opposed to just going straight through and reading it? Why is it better to split up into doable parts? The next thing is find a quiet place. You need space to read and to be able to write without distractions. Why is this crucial? Why do you need a good space to read and write? Why should the space be quiet? Think about campus. What are some good places that you can go and read and write? The next thing, gather your materials. You want to make sure that you have your notebook, any related materials. Um, you want to go somewhere where you have internet access. You want to make sure you have everything with you. If you have something to do for a math or science class, make sure you have a calculator. Now, think about this. Why is it important for you to have everything with you? Why is that something that you want to make sure that you do? So, think about this question. Write down some reasons why it's important to have everything with you at the point of where you're going to go study. The next thing you want to make sure that you approach your reading as a process. Academic reading requires that you do a number of things in a certain order. All of this is on page 13 to 16, but why do you want to approach your academic learning as a process or your academic reading as a process? Why do you want to do, to do it as a process as opposed to just speeding through the reading with nothing else? Think about this. Come prepared to discuss this. So continuing reading to learn, um, you also want to make sure that you use proven reading strategies. You want to take notes and annotate your text. You also want to make sure that you get actively involved in the reading. So what does it mean to be actively involved in the reading? Now when someone says read page six, we all know what that means, but what does it mean if you are going to actively read page six? Think about this and we're going to discuss it some more. Um, six, know what to look for when you're reading. So there are key ideas and elements that you need to identify in order to understand the text. So what kind of things jump out at you to let you know that something is important? These are some of the things that you need to write down now so that way we can discuss it. But what things let you know while you're reading what is important? For example, you might say something is bolded. That's important. What are some other ways that you know that something is important? What are some other things within a reading that are important? Um, the seven, you want to make sure that you summarize what it is that you've learned. Know any concepts or explanations that you do not understand. This is on page 21. So, why is it important to know what it is that you have learned while you've read something? And then on the converse of that, why is it important to know what it is that you have not learned? This too is important. And finally, the last step in this process is review your reading from time to time. This is going to help you to internalize the information so that you can apply it to your writing and your classwork. What does internalize mean? Make sure that you define that. Um, learning outcome two, this is understanding the reading process. So within the reading process, there are four elements. You have pre-reading, which is the beginning. You have reading, which is pretty self-explanatory. Then you have rereading, and then you have reflecting. One of the most important steps within the reading process is the reflecting process. Why is the reflecting process important? Now, in order to answer that question, you might need to know what the reflecting process is. And the reflecting process is where you evaluate your reading experience, and you ask yourself, what, it, what have I learned? Um, what questions do I have about the material? 
and how has this reading changed or expanded what I already know about the topic? So why is this step critical in the reading process? When you're understanding the reading process, there are also other strategies that you can use. You have KWL. Within KWL, the K stands for what I know. No K. Um, the next part is what I want to know. This is the W. What is it that you want to know while you're reading? So sometimes you would ask yourself, okay, if we are talking about the reading process, what do I want to know about the reading process? That's the W. And then the L, what have I learned? This too is important because what you've learned lets you know what you still need to go back and focus on if you haven't learned it. And it also lets you know what you don't need to spend as much time on if you've already mastered it. So that's KWL, what I know, what I want to know, and what I've learned. Another reading strategy is SQ3R. In SQ3R, you have survey, question, read, recite, and review. Survey is where you kind of skim it just to see what the general overview is. So this could include looking at titles, um, looking at definitions, that's a survey. Based off of what you've surveyed, you have a question. So if you have chapter two, academic reading and learning, a question might be, what is academic reading? A question might be, what kind of learning? So questions, you just ask questions based off what you've surveyed. The next one is the R, the first R, which is read. Read is where you actually read the selection. So from there, you recite. What does recite mean in this sense? Well, recite in this sense means that you are going to say it back to yourself. Now you don't have to verbalize this out loud. Say it could, recite could also mean that you're just thinking through it in your mind. So what have I just read? What does it mean? Then review is when you go back to the questions and you answer those questions after you've read it. So if you can recite and you can review, then you pretty much understand. Now you might not understand fully, but you understand more than when you first just surveyed it. So that's SQ3R, survey, question, read, recite, and review. Learning outcome three is using basic reading strategies. So you have annotating the text. And when you annotate a text, this means to add comments and make notes within the text. So where would you do this? You would do this in the margin. So you write any questions that you have in the margin. And this is the side that's on the left that's separated by a line. That is the margin. If you have any questions, you write in the margin. Now ask yourself, why would I want to write within the margin? Well, so that way if you have a question, you don't have to go digging through the question. It's already there, set off by itself to where you can ask a question. Now, another question you should consider is, if you have a question, who can you ask? That's a question in which we will discuss. Another thing you do is underline or highlight important points. That's something that you also want to do. Why would you want to highlight or underline important points? We'll discuss that. So summarizing key passages, again, why is it important to summarize key passages? Um, is it just for the sake of saying that you did it, or is it for a deeper understanding? What part of the reading process does summarizing key passages, what part of the reading process does that encompass? Define new terms. Now why is it important to define new terms? If you have a new term in a sentence and it's something you don't understand, can you just skip it and keep going? Why is it important to define new terms? The next thing, make connections to other parts. So if you have other parts within a sentence, that will help you to be able to define something. Um, for example, if you have um, paint the wall in ikru, what does ikru mean? What in that sentence tells you that ikru is what it is? Ikru is a color. What within that sentence let you know that it is a color? So could it be because you said paint the wall and then you have this word? So if you say paint the wall, chances are you're thinking this is a color. Um, make connections to other parts. So a lot of times if you can understand the parts within a paragraph, you can also understand the sentence. Now there may be a term that you don't completely understand, but you can define this term and that will help you to better set that part within the whole. So make sure that you make connections to other parts. Now, another key thing to remember is that highlighting or underlining alone are not good ways to annotate. Um, you may forget later what it is that you, why you marked the text. So write notes in the margin as reminders of what you were thinking while you were reading. 
Sometimes we get to where we are reading something and we just start highlighting. Sometimes it is stuff that you actually want to go back and look at. Sometimes it is stuff that you understand. Sometimes you're just zoning out and you just start highlighting. So you want to make sure that you make notes in the margin as to what you highlight and why, as well as anything that you've underlined. You want to explain to yourself why it is that you thought it was significant. Now the next thing we have is using basic reading strategies, and this is a continuation. Effective note taking, taking notes that help you to focus on your reading material and understand it a little more fully. Effective notes make studying for an exam much easier. Now think about it, in what ways does taking effective notes help you study for an exam more effectively? So there are a couple of ways, think of some of these ways and be prepared to discuss them. Some tips when you're taking notes is use your own words as much as possible. Record only key points and details, so that's summarizing of course. You want to only put down key points and key details. Consider boldface or italicizing words, so if you are one of those people that you type your notes up, bold and italicize things that you think are important so they can stand out to you. Um, another thing that you want to do, you could add graphics or pictures to help you remind thing, to help you remember things. And you have captions as well as text. So abbreviations and symbols are also another way. Rather than writing out the word between and spending time while you are taking notes when someone is lecturing, B slash W is another way to write between. So you can use shorthand. This will help you be able to speed up your note taking and at the same time conceptualize it in a way that you understand. Um, learning outcome four, reading critically. This involves a lot of analyzing and evaluating. Within all of your college courses, you will be reading critically. You will be asked to analyze and you will be asked to evaluate. Analyzing is classifying and comparing ideas as well as looking for cause and effect relationships, while evaluating is weighing the values of a text and considering its strengths and weaknesses. Again, in all of your classes, you will be analyzing and evaluating in some way, shape, or form. Now the next thing we have is learning outcome five, and that's where you're, that's improving vocabulary. This is important because again, if you don't understand what a word means, it might interfere with the rest of the sentence and thus the rest of the paragraph. So to understand and benefit from your academic reading, you need to understand words in each of their texts. Um, a way that you can do this, you can keep a vocabulary notebook. It's, this is especially helpful for students who English is not their second language. You can write down words that you haven't seen before, that way next time you come across them you know what they mean. Um, you can use context. What is context? Be prepared to discuss that. Understanding word parts, that also is something that is important. So for example you have the word prehypertension. What does that mean? You can use the word parts. You have pre, which is before, hyper, which is above, and tension, which is stress. So whenever someone said, whenever you hear someone has prehypertension, those word parts would help you figure out that word, even if you didn't know what it meant by itself. So that's the point of word parts, and we will practice this. Learning outcome six is reading graphics. You want to make sure that you scan the graphic, study the specific parts, question the graphic, and reflect on its effectiveness. Sometimes you can have a graphic that it doesn't necessarily make sense. But if you look at the different parts of it, that helps you to understand the whole. Another thing, why, another reason why graphics are useful is that you can have three pages of text if you're reading something for a class. You can have three pages of text with a lot of numbers and you might say to yourself, I really don't understand what this means. At the end of all that, it will say, see graphic one. And then you turn the next page or you look further down or wherever the graphic is and the graphic is a whole lot easier to understand than the three pages you just read. It's giving you the same information but it's put visually, it's clean, and it doesn't give you all the extra stuff that you don't need. So that's why graphics can be useful. So if you think of it as this, maybe you forgot you have a quiz the next day and your quiz is over um, income and spending. A lot of times there are graphics attached to statistics. So you can look at this graphic and this will tell you something. So although it's not going to be as effective as the three pages that you should have read, it will at least tell you something. And for the people who do read like they're supposed to, then the graphic serves as a way to reinforce what it is that you've just read. It helps you to understand and conceptualize what those numbers and what that data means. So that's the purpose of a graphic. Now, the last learning outcome, which is seven, is review of, the read, of, review of academic reading and learning. 
So, what are the four steps in the reading process? Make sure you understand what these four steps are and how they work. What does it mean to annotate a text? What should you do when you're annotating the text? As far as what it looks like, where should questions go? What else do you need? What does it mean to use context clues to figure out the meaning of a new word? What do context clues mean and what do they do? Why is it important to know how to read a graphic? What can a graphic help you do? That concludes chapter two, academic reading and writing. Make sure that you understand these things and come prepared with the questions. <laughs>